a quick rebuild of uh, a front uh, Dana 44. We're going to put uh, new ball joints and um, some new U joints. Um, Matt's Jeep's got what about 100,000 miles on it? it has 105,000 miles. 105,000. So it's just some good maintenance and uh, show you how to change the ball joints. Use a cheap Harbor Freight tool to press those out. We'll show you how that works and you know. Uh, just some good stuff they need to do. We'll probably check his bearings as well. So I'm gonna show you what tools you need and uh, how this goes. I'm gonna start by taking off the tire and then we'll get rolling. Okay, Matt's gonna go ahead and take off the brake. Uh, what is that, a 13? That looks like it, yeah. And a 13 millimeter. And he'll take off the calipers. We'll pull the rotors off when that's done. Um, put this video in fast motion while he does that. Pull the cotter pin, take off this lock nut that keeps it from spinning, got a little washer under it. Use a big breaker bar and a half inch 36 millimeter socket. Always carry a 36 millimeter socket with you. And go ahead and loosen this up now. We're gonna go ahead and pull this all as a unit and then we'll drive this out when we're done. The hub itself bolts on from the backside. And uh, I'm gonna put a wrench on here. So Matt, yeah, so. You need a 12.13 millimeter socket, and these things are generally a little bit tight. So, you know, not here, so I might get my little breaker bar here. I just want to break them loose. The easiest way to do this is to, uh, I don't want that one's loose, is you got to turn the wheel to the right on this one for the first two. And the, the other one's on the front side, and you got to turn the wheel that way to get to that one. So you gotta get these guys out of there. And the whole hub assembly will pull off. So it's really just these three bolts. Oh, you can see, oh, they're not, all right. So they're not frozen in place, which is good. Ready? Yeah. Now we've turned the wheel to the left and we're pulling the last one out. And we should be able to just pull that whole hub off of there. Okay, so once you get those bolts off, you should be able to just, well, that was easy. So the hub came off nice and easy. We'll look at that in a minute. And the axle shaft is out. So we're looking at the axle shaft. Looking good. Looking good. We're going to replace this U-joint. And next we're going to pull these, uh, this, this off and the knuckle off and clean it up and replace these ball joints. So Matt is busy pulling the cotter pins. cotter pins. We'll take these off, get this tie rod disconnected, and go ahead and pull this knuckle off. That's yeah. Okay, so now I want to separate the ball joint. They make this pickle fork tool for that. It's usually easier. So you should be able to drive it in. Now you might do a little bit of damage ah fortunately we didn't do any damage to that i left the nut on top so it wouldn't just fall now i can take that nut off and i'll put it back on and we'll just leave the steering out of the way for now cool and, and just so you know this was a three quarter i think that's what we used on this one the bottom one we used an inch and an eighth and the top one we used a metric founder what would we use it's right there whatever yeah this one here 22. 22. The bottom one might be a 30 metric, but we didn't have a 30 metric, so yeah, I think they're all met. Uh, these two are metric. And then, of course, what I would do is I would once again leave these on so everything doesn't just fall off. And we're going to tap gently on the, you know, I say gently, and hopefully the. A uh, little bit of persuasion on that knuckle and watch it drop. Yeah, it should drop. Boom, a little persuasion. There we go. 
So uh, I went ahead and purchased the um, TerraFlex ball joints for the uh, Dana 44. Uh, comes uh, nicely packaged. Uh, of course, you can see your upper uh, comes complete, has nuts and the, the ball joint itself. And then the lower, same thing. Um, inside here, inside here, you can see uh, the, the Zerk fittings. So you can put those in, in once, uh, once you've got everything secured. So we're going to use this to Harbor Freight cheapo ball joint separator tool to press these bad boys out. So let's kind of go through the tools we needed. This was just a regular, you need that 12 point. So it's important to note that you have 12 point metrics. Um, these are standards. These are my metrics. There it is, 13. So you got to make sure you have that to get these bolts. These bolts hold on the uh, unit bearing. Unit bearing in the back um you have tools to pull these important stuff you need different types of circles like i used a socket this was to drive that uh, upper ball joint the tear flex in so you can get on there without hitting it essentially i it was kind of like that i fitted it over and used it to pound it down um we used a so you need some specific sockets i think this one a, uh, about 21 seven eighths i think that's correct george seven eighths seven eighths thank you and one and one sixteenth no it's a 15 16 so the the teraflex the, the lower nut is a 15 16 on the teraflex but the stock was a inch and an eighth nut so they were a little different um i think the threads were the same size when you look at the size of the hole there, just a different nut, no big deal. So, got that. So you gotta make sure you have those bigger sockets, deep sockets. Um, of course, you need your pickle fork, hammer, some good stuff. We use the torch for heating things up. You probably need to have a refrigerator handy for freezing your stuff, pry bar to get things in and out. You saw the tools that we used for uh, changing the U-joints out. Um, and then, uh, like I said, this is these uh, Harbor Freight models are China, probably good for one or two uses. This one's probably about done. Okay, ball joints. The upper ball joint is going to push up and out. The lower ball joint is going to push down and out. Um, probably do it either way. I'm going to take the upper ball joint off. I've, the way I've always done it. So to do that you get out of your little ball joint kit that's going to go over it's got to be big enough so it's not pushing up on it so you just fit that over you fit this in there and then oh well i need two hands this slips over and it goes up like that. And I'll show you in just a second. Okay, as you can see, the this goes over the bolt, kind of sits up in there. Here, I'll let Matt hold the camera. And then, so this is pushing on the bottom of the ball joint, which is gonna start pushing up into there as you tighten this down. So I've got my king size wrench here. Yeah, so, you know, if you've got any extra old DOM tubing or piping around, we use a little piece of pipe I had that's smaller than the inner diameter because we, we got it to start and then we couldn't get it to push all the way out. So now, well, going well, that little piece of pipe that we just shoved in here, we use this piece to start it. And uh, it feels like it's, it's, I'm going to guess it's done. And I'll tell you, these are not easy. But they're easier the second time than the first time. 
Okay, so here's the piece that we cut. And we cut it so it would go around, because otherwise it was sitting out here and it would want to rock like that. So we kind of cut it so I could get it just up on that edge and on the back. And then you need something that'll let it fall through. So you got that piece that comes with the kit. And then you've got a You guys have got a good tool. Okay, so you get that on the bottom. Hold on, George, this came out. Okay. Got contact up. Okay, so now you gotta, you gotta make sure everything kind of lines up good. Okay, I'm gonna the... roll that around there. And then I'm gonna, uh, give me the bigger, heavier socket, the 22. Uh, it's right there. Okay. And yeah, we're gonna be putting okay. some torque on that. So hopefully the big, that's the nice thing about the bottom one. It looks like you can actually get a... Okay, so I'm gonna try to get that in there. Okay, and one, ready? Mm -hmm. Looks like it went. So it finally let go, that's for sure. Okay, we somewhat messed up this part of the video somehow, not really sure. But what Matt's showing you is that we have now pressed the ball joints in. Uh, you just kind of the reverse of how you pushed them out and you use the same tool um, and just reverse that procedure. Uh, top one uh, pushes in from the top down. I usually put the bottom one in first, push it up, push the top one down. Uh, we put the grease fittings in them uh, greased them up, getting them ready, and you know, as Matt's showing you, uh, you can see we bent that tool, but uh, we got it all ready to go. Put the knuckle back on and see how it turns. So, knuckle's on. A couple things I want to show you. Like, can't push it quite with thumb pressure, but if you notice, one finger I can kind of pull it, but there's no loose spot. This is really went up. This went together really well. If you got a bad, if you got something bad wrong, like it'll be really loose in one spot and then rattling around, but it's got a nice even pull throughout the turning radius. So we think that's good. 75 foot pounds on top, put the cotter key in. 80 foot pounds on the bottom, put the cotter key in. When I was done, I worked it back and forth. We torqued it a second time. We think we're good. We'll put it all back together. So generally, doesn't really matter. You can put this on before or after. I'm going to put it on now. I'm going to slide. Oops. Yeah. Slide that in. I'm going to slide my axle in. And then you got to start turning things to get everything to line up. Oh, there it goes. Okay. And I had pre-positioned the bolts and now I'll just kind of hand and I put that little brake guy on and we'll start working these three bolts in from the back so you got to kind of you got to work your unit bearing around so you get them have to line up just right so essentially I'm going to Get those three bolts in from the unit bearing. This is a one-way nut. Put the big washer on, the 36 millimeter. I will tighten this down with my big half-inch torque wrench. And then I'm gonna put this on and the cotter key. And that'll put the front end assembled. Of course, I gotta put the brake rotor and the brakes back on. And then everything's back together. Easy stuff. Okay, well, we are just about done. Matt's putting his uh, tire on. So that was a, about two half days. Got his nice Terraflex heavy duty ball joints. Some new U joints up front. So he ought to be good for a couple more Rubicon trips. Good deal, Matt, you happy? Oh yeah, uh, can't wait to uh, get this tire on. We'll do a quick little test drive um, and then go from there. All right.